Hi everyone, welcome back. So at this point with our Square One Art Project, we have all finished drawing um, our self-portrait using pencil and then going over those pencil lines in Sharpie. And this week I am going to be showing you all how we will be coloring these in. Um, the supplies that we'll be using, I'll go over in a minute with you. Friends at home, um, I will highly encourage you to find the materials that we have um, that we're using at school. If you do not have them available to you, please email me and I will arrange a time to try and get those supplies home to you so that you're able to complete the project. All right, here we go. All right, so here are all the supplies that you will need to color in your Square One Art Self Portrait. I have down here some skin colored crayons. You will find the skin color that best matches yours and pick that color and that's what you will be using to color in your face. We have oil pastels over here. The oil pastels will be used for coloring in all of our facial features um, and our masks and our hair. Our watercolors here, and I also have a, a paintbrush and just a cup of water. Um, those are gonna be for the background. So go gather these supplies if you have them. If you do not, please email me and I will arrange a time to get them home to you. Here we go. All right, so our very first step is going to be using our skin colored crayons to color in our face, our ears, our neck, and that's it. So what you're gonna do is Try and find the skin color that best matches your skin. It, it's probably not gonna be an exact match, but you're gonna try your best. So for me, I'm gonna take this one here. This is looking the closest for me. I'm gonna put those other ones aside and I'm gonna get started. So I'm gonna start coloring in my face. Remember to try not to color in your mask, just that top part is now your face because a lot of your face is being covered up by your mask. Alrighty friends, so we have colored in our skin color. I'm gonna put aside that crayon and move on to our next step. Okay, so our next step is gonna be using oil pastels. I'm gonna open up the package so that you can see them all here. And we're gonna be using these oil pastels to color in our eyes, our mask, our hair, our eyebrows, and our clothing. So, you're just gonna choose the colors that work best for you. I'm gonna start with my eye color. And for me, I have hazel colored eyes. So sometimes they're a little green, sometimes they're a little blue, sometimes they have some brown. So I'm gonna add actually all of those colors in there. And notice I'm coloring just really lightly as I go because I know I'm gonna be adding more color. All right, there's my little bit of green. Then I'll add in my little bit of blue. And notice I'm just coloring that iris of my eye. Remember that's that colorful part. And then I'm gonna add in a little bit of brown so that I have a little bit of variety in color. Some of us have just brown eyes, just blue eyes. You can just color in with one color. If you have come eyes like me that kind of change color a little bit, feel free to add a little more detail. All right. So after we've colored in our eyes, I'm gonna grab my black oil pastel and just color in my pupil, which is just black. Okay, um, then I'm going to start on my hair color. My hair color is like a blondish brown, so I'm gonna use, again, a variety of colors. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow we talk about this in art class a lot, but um, when you're coloring in, really try and find your strongest coloring muscle. That means that 
you're really pressing down the best as hard as you can with your crayon to really add lots of color to your paper okay so if it feels like you've just kind of gone over it lightly kind of come back in and use that strong coloring muscle to color in a little bit more okay so there's my yellow and then I'm gonna use this tannish color here because my my hair has like a variety of blonde and brown in it so add a little bit of that tan too so again look in the mirror ask a friend maybe ask your teacher if you're there and see what color works best for your hair color okay so once I've colored in my hair color making sure I don't have any little white spots poking out here okay after I finish with my hair color I'm gonna move on to my mask so for my mask I've kind of drawn a little bit of like a cartoon smile on mine so I might add some extra rosy cheeks and add some pink cheeks for my mouth I might add a light pink just go over that mouth a little bit And then I can decide whatever color I'd like to use to color in the rest of my mask. Um, so for me, I'm thinking I'm probably gonna go with a teal blue. And I'm just gonna color in the background of my mask now. Depending on how your mask goes or whatever you've done to decorate your mask, that will, um, tell you how you're gonna be coloring it in. So yours will not look exactly like mine. In fact, none of ours will look exactly alike because we've all done something a little bit different for this part. If you ever get oil pastel on um, a part that you don't want it to be, you can actually use your fingernail. And because of the wax in the, um, pastel you can actually just kind of scrape it right off which is great Okay, so colored that in blue. And as I've colored, I've actually decided I kind of want to add like maybe another color to go with this. Um, so I might try might try some purple and almost give it like a little bit of like a tie-dye look. So add kind of multiple colors in there just to make it more interesting. Color is really great for that. Always changes things up. and makes things stand out. Ooh, I like that. Okay, so as you go, you can just kind of figure it out, play with it. Um, and after you finish coloring your mask, you're gonna move on down to your clothing. Um, so down here on my clothing, I'm just gonna decide um, sort of a pattern that I want to color in my clothing. So I'm gonna start coloring my dots, here we go. Okay, so after you have finished coloring in your mask and your clothing down here, 
Um, and I am gonna add just one more detail to mine. I'm gonna make my collar another color green. Okay, so after you filled in all that space, it is now time for the background. Okay, so for the background, you're going to be using watercolors. And you'll see the watercolor palette here. And you're gonna take your brush. I have my brush sitting in a cup of water right now. And you're gonna wanna make sure to get watercolor started. As we know, we have to dip into our cup, get our brush wet, and then we have to go into that first color. Okay, let me see if everyone can see. And we do this in my kindergarten first grade classes where we count our tomatoes to help us kind of know when we have enough paint on our brush. So we go one tomato, two tomato, three tomato, four, five tomato, six tomato, seven tomato, more. And that helps us know, okay, I should have enough paint on my brush to get started. So for your background, you can really do any kind of, um, thing you'd like. I'd like you to fill the entire background in with watercolor. So if you wanted to do all one color, that's fine. If you wanted to do kind of like a pattern design on here, maybe like different colors, um, you know, going in a striped, um, like across the page, you could have them going down the page, you could have polka dots, and then fill in that background space. So really, um, sky's the limit here. I'm gonna do mine in a rainbow going all the way down, so here we go. Alrighty, so here we are. I am loving this. I'm so happy how this has turned out. I actually even love how with my watercolor, with my rainbow, the colors, you know, kind of got wet and they started blending together. And I think that's really true of a real rainbow, right? We don't see like stripes of exact color. So it's kind of nice that it blends in. I think it looks great. Um, and I love how just colorful this is. I'm gonna ask everyone to please stay away from using the color black when you do your watercolor. Um, what happens with the color black often is it ends up completely dominating the picture. That means it just takes it over and um, we lose a lot of that really great detail that we've added before. So if we can stay away from using the color black for our background, unless you absolutely need it, um, that would be great. Okay, so Please email me if you guys have any questions. I cannot wait to see these.